So I used to get this comment a lot from my teachers that I needed to have more phrasing in my music. And they were always using these buzzwords like show more line and breathe with the music. And I didn't really know what those meant or how to work on them, how to work them into the music. So I kind of like just ignored them and worked on other things that I knew how to work on, like rhythm and dynamics and technique, because those were easier for me to comprehend and understand. So I'm gonna help you figure out how to add phrasing to your music. And I'm gonna use the example of the prelude to box G major cello suite, which if you want to see the full performance, I'm releasing in another video today and you can just go find it on the channel. And uh, by the way, if you like these videos, I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and uh, share this one with your friends if you think it'll be interesting for them on Facebook or whatever. So here's the thing about phrasing. Phrasing is how you turn music into a story. Music is supposed to be the international language that everyone understands. We all can hear it and we hear the emotions of these intervals and of these melodies. It's just like speaking in English or speaking in a regular language. You have words. Each of those words kind of means something. You string them together into a sentence and on a page that sentence does have meaning but when you're speaking it out loud you can add to the meaning. You can enhance the meaning by adding shape to the sentence, by adding inflection, by adding little ups and downs to show which words are more important. For instance, if I'm trying to tell you a point then I will use particular inflections and types of sounds in my sentence to show you that there's a word coming up that is very important. And once I've said that word, then I can show you that that was the important word that we're done now and I can relax away from it. I do that essentially by adding phrasing and inflection to my voice. I do it without even thinking about it. And that's kind of what you want for music. At first, because you haven't really worked with this or experimented with it, you have to think about it a lot. You can start thinking about it in three components. The first two have to do with the shape of the line that you're creating. In phrasing, just like in inflections when you're speaking, you're making these lines. You're making these ups and downs over time. So the ups and downs is the first thing. That's the component of growing and shrinking, of rising intention or lowering intention. It's just like any story, any movie, any piece. You're always either feeling like the tension is increasing or you arrive and then after that, the tension decreases, raising up on a hill and lowering down on the other side of the hill. You have to start thinking about when you're gonna be rising up and when you're gonna be lowering down. That can be based on things like how the chord progression feels. Is the melody rising up in register? Different things, the, like the stuff you learn in music theory essentially is how you decide on the phrasing. Eventually you don't have to think about it, but for now those are the kind of ideas that can show you where you should be rising in tension and lowering. The second thing is the x-axis. So that was the y-axis, this is the x-axis. Basically time, the back and forth of your phrases. So if you're rising in tension, how long is it going to take? Where is the most important note, the sort of climactic note, and how long does it take to get there before you're on the other side of the hill falling back down? So once you set up how much you're rising and lowering, and you set up how long the phrase is and where the top of the phrase is, then you can start shaping it by saying, okay, is it a diagonal line up over that time? Or is it a dramatic trumpet bell shape line up? That's when you can really start experimenting, thinking about different shapes to your phrase. Third is how to let that shape manifest into your playing, how to actually make it happen. You always have to bring out shape in your instrument. You should never ever be flat or else the listener will get bored, like really bored. So you have to think about, okay, if I'm raising up in this phrase, how do I actually show that in my instrument? You can raise up in dynamic. That's especially great with Bach because there are no dynamics listed. You can go as loud or soft as you want. In other pieces, you just have to stay within the area of a dynamic. You still have some leeway. You can go up or down in that dynamic without getting to the other dynamic above or below that. You can also mess with spacing of the notes. So think about it. If you're going da 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 if you slow down like literally that is going to add tension. If you're listening to this consistent pattern of notes and then it slightly slows down near the end of a phrase then you think to yourself wow, I really was expecting to be there by now, but for some reason the performer is making me wait for the end of this 
measure and that adds drama that's increasing the tension so that's on the upswing of a phrase then when the climax happens you can let it speed up a little bit just to show that the end of the phrase happened and that you're relaxing you can also adjust the tone obviously a more relaxed legato tone shows a more relaxed moment in the phrase whereas increasing intention and intensity and attack of the tone obviously shows rising intention so those are some ways you can get started with phrasing but eventually you want to get to the point where you can just phrase in the the way you speak in your language, where you can go up and down and inflect without even thinking about it. You'll get there, but you have to start by just experimenting on your instrument, looking at the music, thinking about the chord progressions, thinking about the lines and the shapes and the y-axis and the x-axis and how those shapes are actualized in your instrument. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope that helps. I hope that's interesting too. I'll see you guys in the next video.